So let's go ahead and give this weird looking toilet shape a try real quick. And I want to point out that there is a hole right here going straight through the middle. And so that little circle that you see right there at the bottom, this thing is actually the bottom cylinder, the bottom hole. You're, you're looking, this is hollow, this is empty, that's empty space there, just in case you can't see what you're looking at. And I'm going to go over the rectangular parts pretty quickly. It's 1.5 squares, so that's 6. And so I'll go ahead and pick a good spot for myself that I'm clearly not going to run into anything else. And so maybe right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I'm going to go this direction, also 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like I came pretty close to hitting my neck shape. Oops. Uh, well, good thing I, I got lucky there. But then it goes forward. I'm sorry, not forward, to the right. So this was back, and this goes to the right two squares. So one, two. And then over here is obviously going to be one, two as well. Hopefully the box shape is by now. You know how to do this by yourself. It's too easy, too obvious. This part, and then, okay, what happens next? Okay, it says, well, this is 0.5, so this is 2 from here to here. That means 2 plus uh, 4 is 6, so this has to be 4 because math. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll slow it down. Oops, sorry about that. I'll slow it down once I get to the uh, circle part, clearly. Okay, it comes forward. Okay, it went forward 2 here, and then it goes forward 1 more, or which is 4 squares. And so, again, it's going to this direction, and then this would clearly be 4. So 2 plus 4 is, again, 6. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then it says this one goes forward 4. So from here to the back is 4. So let's we'll see if that's right. 1, 2, 3, 4. In order to find out if it's right is I should be 2 above, directly 2 above. And I am. Hey, 1, 2. And then, of course, okay, well, this goes back 6 as well. That hasn't stopped being 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6. And I know if I did it right, if it's directly 4 above. And hey, it is, again, because math. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw 4 out. 1, 2, 3, 4. Because right there is where it starts arcing. And now, let's slow it down, and let's see how to do this next step. I'm going to go ahead and mark my center mark. And so there's six across. The center mark is right in the middle there before the arc. So it's clearly going to be at one, two, three. Another way to figure it out is it says this radius is 0.75. So one, two, three in this direction, this straight line, and then one, two, three in this direction. So this big arch here, this well, this toilet bowl looking shape is clearly a total radius of 0.75 and so I can even mark this end right here with one two three and so what I want to draw first is this outer rim and we'll draw the inner hole in a second all right so okay as a radius of three I look at my corners of these lines I just created for myself and okay this one's up two so it's clearly going to be almost straight an almost straight curve it's going to come very close to the corner as usual Whereas this one, this is only a half circle, by the way, so this is a very easy circle to draw if you haven't figured it out yet. That is a very sharp angle there, so it should actually come pretty close to my uh, corner. And so, okay, we're going to curve super sharply. And, okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and we're going to talk about this one in a second. Let's go ahead and draw this smaller circle. It says it has a diameter of 1. This radius of 0.75 was 3 squares, as we said earlier. This diameter of 1 means we have a diameter of 4 squares. That through means it's a hole that goes all the way through by the way. So diameter 4, that means it has a radius of 2. Okay, and so we say from the center we go 1, 2. From the center we go 1, 2. From the center, we go 1, 2, and from the center, we go 1, 2, giving us a diameter of 1, 2, 3, 4 squares, or a measurement of 1. We look at our obtuse angles. We create it to be almost straight. And so at this point, we're just drawing circles. And hopefully by now, you see how to draw the circles. And again, what I'm looking for is that you hit your radius measurements. You can see the measurements. You're not passing where your lines should be. You're not just drawing it randomly. You're not just drawing a quick circle. And you can also see the direction of the elongation. So for example, this should curve very sharply, as should this one. And again, it's not going to be perfect. I don't want it to be perfect. What I want is that you can see the direction of the elongation and again, the radius measurements. And the last two steps are these two arcs here. And of course, this tangent line that you can barely see. What you can't do is this. That's not acceptable. I will not take that 
circle. You have to see the tangent. And to do that, you've got to find the center mark of the bottom two circles. And so I know this is too tall. So here's where we need to slow it down. I'm going to go two below. And I'm going to mark this in green so you can see. And does green show up well in this video? Let me check real quick. And yeah, you can see that. That's the, that's the new center mark for ourselves. Okay. And so I'm going to start with this new center mark to draw this outer arc here. And so we'll go one, two, three away. And of course, that's where it should be. Because of math, it should end at the corner there. And then we'll go one, two, three here. And if we did it right, it should be two above or two below the previous end of our top circle again because math and then this last one's going to be an imaginary one so one two three we're not going to actually see most of this or half of this arc here but it's an imaginary line and so then now I'm going to draw based on this sharp arc which should be two below the previous one I'm going to draw a very sharp arc that bends very quickly but it's going to be imaginary for myself and I'm going to darken the parts that I need and if I did it right, the tangent should be right below the other tangent. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better to adjust the focus too. But then, okay, if I did it right, the two tangents should be above. And you look at the direction change. There's your tangent. You just go straight down. You see it connect. And then I don't need everything behind it. You can erase it, although I won't take off. You have a little imaginary line going behind it there. But if you are OCD like me, you can erase it now. We don't need it anymore. But I do need to see the tangent line if you want credit. And then the rest is just darkened as an arc. And then, of course, we can see the entire part of this arc. And so we're good. And so what I need to see on this is on a cylinder like this is a tangent. If I don't see the tangent, if you're just – let me do this and maybe red. If you're just connecting it like this, just like that, I will not give you credit if, you, if I don't see the clear tangent line. And then the last thing is we need to draw this – backwards or this back part of this bottom circle here the bottom part of the hollow end and so I'm going to look at this center mark I know the diameter is still one or four squares so the radius is still two for the bottom it hasn't stopped being that so one two I'll draw my line one two draw my line and I'm going to look I can see that that center mark is just happens to line up exactly with the corner that is an obtuse angle and so I'm going to go ahead and make it an almost straight curve and we've done or finished with the shape. Hopefully that was too easy, too obvious.